Brig Williams, flight instructor and an educator in Southwest Washington. I am the pilot in the classroom. I'm also the secretary treasurer for the Southwest chapter of the Washington Pilots Association. And we have a whole slew of flyouts and safety seminars associated with those flyouts. And our first flyout this year will be in March to Woodland. That's right, Woodland, right here in our own backyard, the bane of new pilots. The first time we have to go in and actually test our short field landing skills. And that's exactly what this flyout is going to be about. Short field perfection and also a flower drop. Now Woodland, it's just like any other airport. Actually, it's one of the gems of Washington State. It started out as a grass field that used to get flooded during the rainy season, but now it is paved, beautifully paved. And I can't wait to show you how to get in there safe, sound, and friendly like. Well, our first safety seminar will be associated with short field landings. Now, I got to tell you, I failed my commercial check ride because of a short field. The first one, I was a little too long, and on the second one, I was short, an automatic fail. Funny thing was, it was the best check ride I ever had, and up until those two landings, everything went great. I came back with a smile on my face because of how well I did, but I knew I had to get short fields down. Now, this is what I discovered. Now, for some of you, this is going to be controversial. You're not going to like it one bit. But, hey, it worked for me, and maybe it'll work for you. It's all about trim. Let's take a look how trim works. There it is, the simple old trim wheel. It's that trim wheel that will usually make a landing great or a landing poor. A lot of times, pilots, we haven't ever mastered that trim wheel. I think some of the part is that we talk about the art of flying and that we got to feel the trim and relieve the pressure off the yoke. But the fact is, that's a mechanical device. And if we understand the mechanics, maybe we can make it work just a little better for us, especially for short field landings. This little device right here messes up more landings than anything else. Now, during our pre-flight, we always know to make sure we set the trim in the neutral position and then we, we come out. But take a look now. It stays in the right position. Now, why is this important for takeoff? Well, it provides the least amount of friction. Engineers know something though. They designed this airplane for takeoff. And what goes up in the air must come down. Now, more than likely, we're never going to use full nose down on a landing or a takeoff. And we definitely need to be careful about full back trim on landings because of an abort. This is a perfect situation for a rapid nose pitch up and a spin over. But what about that neutral trim? That sweet spot. Could it work for a landing? Could it work in a 172? I got a pre flighted. I got my camera set. Let's go fly and find out. Rotation in this aircraft is 55. Best angle is 64. Climb out at 78. Best glide is 65. We are taking off to the east. I am comfortable doing a turn back once we hit 500 feet. If not, we're landing straight ahead, more than likely on uh, Highway 14. If for any time I am not at 71% uh, of my rotation speed at 
Halfway at my liftoff point, I will abort the run. Today, my liftoff point is directly in front of us. It's the, uh, the far set of the Pappy lights. And if I'm not off by that time, I'm aborting my run because uh, I'm not getting the performance out of the aircraft that I want. Now, today is super cold, uh, negative uh, density altitude. We're going to get screaming performance out of this 172. This might not be my same liftoff point during the heat of the summer. So it's important for you to get out in the different seasons and really start to understand the performance of your aircraft. Today we are going to do a, uh, a short field takeoff once again, and uh, but and we're set at neutral. We want to look at those uh, those speeds when we climb out, and when we get up into the practice area, we're going to also take a look about this neutral trim. Now I'm not advocating that neutral trim is the right way to go in every situation. However, it's going to be a fun exercise for us to determine true performance of our aircraft if we don't. Conform. All right, our safety briefing is uh, checked. Uh, we don't have a lot of bird activity uh, right now, uh, which is nice. So let's go ahead and let's get ready for departure. All right. Down one is clear. Base is clear. Final is clear. Let's do our last check for our short field takeoff. Fuel set to both. Trim set for takeoff, mixtures, breach, car beats, and turning on my lights. Primer's locked. And here's your traffic. Now. 
gonna let the airplane settle. 500 feet per minute, hit rate, and I'm at 60 knots. Let's bring in full flaps now. Still 500 feet descent, and look at that. I'm right at 55. Okay, let's do a recovering at 500 feet or a go around. Full power. Size maneuver, bring up the flaps, get flying speed. Five hundred feet per minute. There we are. Full flaps. Maintaining our climb. Very docile on a go around. Why is this important? Well, Now, full back trim now. I'm going to let out the power. I'm going to see what it gives me. Interesting that that is not this uh, glide is 65. I would need to bring in some trim in an emergency, right? There's best glide. On a, on a, if you're using if you're full using power, power with full back trip, let's take a look at what's going to happen there. So if I have a go around and I give that trip, you're going to get that rapid pitch up. And that could put you into a, a quick stall spin situation. But in a neutral trim situation, it's not that aggressive. Okay, let's go ahead and get, let's get set up now for a uh, power on stop. So we're gonna go ahead and set our trim for takeoff in that neutral position. And uh, in this maneuver, right, we're going to simulate an over-rotation uh, on takeoff. And the important thing here is that with poor rudder control, you can get that rotation, a stall, low altitude, bad things will happen. So let's go ahead and get set up. Let's slow the aircraft down. There's rotation speed. Okay. And we... 
Get that pitch up. Okay, let's go ahead and get set up for that approach to, par uh, to departure stall then. So let's go ahead, and here I am. I'm going to go ahead and start dropping in all my flaps. And Newburgh to Halem, Cessna 9 Hotel Charlie, uh, overhead more or less at 2,000 feet. Uh, which runway are you using down there at Newburgh to Halem? Okay, there we are. Take out the power. There's the stall, full power, right rudder, bring out a little trim, I mean, the flaps, and start getting for flying speed. And let's start trying that this again, practice on our airspeed control uh, for that short field landing, right? So, here we are, neutral trim, coming into the pattern, I'm at 3,200 feet. I'm hands free. Go ahead and get stabilized here. Sometimes you get that parallax view. Okay, that feels a little bit more like neutral trim right there. All right, and so we're going to go ahead and take out power. We're at that 1,500 uh, RPM. We're going to start our descent. We're in the wide arc, so let's bring in uh, some flaps. There's 60. Let's go ahead and bring in some more. Full flaps, bring out that power, coming in on short final, right there at 55. Just holding it. Look at that. Minor little adjustments, and then if you have to do a go around, you can anticipate moving it forward. Start getting that flying speed, and bring in the rest, and, uh, and flying just uh, nice. Okay. Very docile. Being in trim is important for safety. If you're out of trim and that aircraft is too hard to control, that's when we can get in those, uh, um, our loss of control accidents. Remember, always follow your POH and also get qualified training in your aircraft through a qualified flight instructor. And when you do, make sure you apply for FAA WINGS credit. WINGS credits can be used in lieu of a flight review and more importantly, it ensures that you stay a proficient pilot. Remember, videos, 
books and ground schools are awesome for knowledge, but they are no substitute for flight training. And if you do flight training, you might as well get FAA WINGS credits. Good short field performance starts with good pre-flight planning. It's time to hit the books. I like to start with the Fly Washington State Airport Guide. This gives me basic information. And even as a CFI, I do like to refer back to my try and true visualized flight maneuvers from ASA. And you'll also need your pilot's operating handbook. We're also going to be using official data to really hone in to the airports. Let's first start with the Washington State Airport Guide. This is a fun book to just get an idea of the airports in our area. But one thing you'll find out is that it is short on data. It gives you the basic CTAF information elevation, traffic pattern altitude, and the runway. But an important factor is missing here. Runway 14 has a displaced threshold of about 290 feet, and we'll have to use more official data to look at what we actually need to start planning for. So let's go ahead and switch over to our electronic flight bag. Modern equipment gives us a lot of good ways to do flight planning. One is by using those satellite photographs for us to get the bird eyed views. And different flight bag manufacturers also have their own runway diagrams. This one from Seattle Avionics in their Fly Q shows that we have a displaced threshold of 290 feet. This is going to be important, uh, especially 
um, as we decide how we're going to make our way into this airport. Notice also that there's 800 feet of stopway um, if you overshoot. This is a good safety consideration as well. One thing I like to think about too in the flight planning is what happens in a, a what happens in an engine out. We often talk about best angle of climb and best rate of climb. Realize best rate of climb will get you higher, but it will take you further away from the airport. So sometimes with a short field operation, you may want to stay at VX for a longer period of time for an increased margin of safety to ensure that you will stay in gliding distance back to the airport. Using the satellite features, we can get a clear idea of what we'll need to do in our pre-flight planning. When I come into Woodland, I typically land to the south, depending on how the winds are working. One thing we need to remember is that there is a bit of a levee berm at the north end of the airport that rises 12 feet. If we take a look, and if this is 290 feet, this means that there's also only 290 feet for a total of only 500 feet before you hit that burn. This is important if you are landing to the north. If you're not going to hit your spot, you need to execute that go around to give you time to climb up safely over those obstacles. Landing to the north is not a time when you want to have an overrun. Landing to the south, because of that rise in elevation, we have that displaced threshold. So you want to land past. So you might want to pick your aiming point in the center of that threshold because of float. But this will be based upon your aircraft and solely on what you think your aircraft can do. Kind of hard to see are the landing lights. There are runway lights that are located at the airport. These are good markers to determine both takeoff and landing performance to mark your side. We roughly have 1,900 feet of available distance minus the 300 feet. So 1,600 feet halfway through is about 800 feet. Knowing your halfway point and looking will help you determine where you need to have your wheels down by for available stop distance and also where you need to develop power before executing out. So once again, let's go back to that diagram and know the facts. 1,953 feet minus 290. So let's do some conservative rounding. 1,900, 300, that leaves us 1,600 feet. It's better to be a little safe on the estimates than to be so precise that we're deciding if we can actually make it or not. Now that we know the lay of the land and what we have available to us, let's go ahead and let's start looking at the key factors that we need in making our decision for our pre-flights. This time I like to go back and generalize on just on the basic maneuvers. If you haven't done this in a while, it's okay to go back and hit the books. Short field, takeoff and climb. What are the key factors that we need to look at? Well, we're doing the pre-flight right now. And look at this, use of flaps. That's going to be highly dependent upon your operating book. And we're gonna talk about the use of flaps Know the local airport traffic pattern. 
We can find that in our electronic flight book. Position the airplane at the end of the runway to ensure maximum runway available. Now this is important on a displaced threshold. You can use it for the takeoff run. You just can't use it for landing. Lift off at the minimum recommended flying speed. We'll need to find that. Establish the altitude that results in VX with full throttle. What's VX for your airplane? And what's VY? And then everything else is pretty normal. The takeoffs, typically, the most important thing for the takeoff is the pre-flight planning to make sure that you can get your aircraft out of there, especially if there's any obstacles, in which Woodlands does have some. Let's now take a look at our landing. One big thing here to find is our 1.3 of our stall speed in the dirty configuration, in the landing configuration. So 1.3 of our stall speed. This is going to be important and how much flaps do you have to use. This is where the spot mess method will come in handy. Most importantly, you have your manual. One interesting thing about Cessnas, especially the 172, is the use of flaps. Flaps are recommended. It will get you up in the air a lot faster. However, there's a penalty in the climb. And so as the pilot in command, you have to determine if you want to use flaps or maybe you would rather not have the penalty in the climb. If this is a rough field, flaps are always beneficial because then you can get into ground ground effect, but it states to leave the flaps in until you have climbed out over the obstacles. Important information that you want to reread before doing short field operations. Cessna also points out that in short field landings, this is for smooth air. If you have rough air, you need to add speed coming in for the landing. The other important consideration is stall speed and also your center of gravity. Notice that there's nearly five knots difference between the most rearward center of gravity and the most forward center of gravity. Going into a short field, you want to know how you're loaded because that will determine your approach speed. Always read the fine print. Takeoff distance and your temperature settings. We also recommend that you at least increase this by 50% on the minimum side, or if you're unsure of your skill and your practice level, that you might want to even double it. 
So that means that in March at 20 degrees at full gross, it will take nearly 900 feet to, on your ground roll for takeoff. Halfway at the, the airport is roughly 800 feet. So this starts giving you a good idea of performance. In the heat of the summer, the ground roll will be a thousand. Can you stop your aircraft at rotation speed within the remaining 800 feet? These are questions you need to ask during your pre-flight preparation. Additionally, read the fine print for your landings. 40% flaps, power off, maximum braking. At full gross weight at sea level, at 20 degrees, my ground roll should be 530 feet. One thing that's not discussed here is your float. From where you come in, how far will you float before you can start your ground roll? A couple of notes about in-flight photography. It can be a huge distraction. Make sure that all cameras are set and running before startup. And once that engine starts, you aviate, navigate, communicate, and forget about the equipment. Safety of flight is more important. Also remember, if you are going to do videos, make sure you promote safe, sane, and friendly flying. Release. Instruments are in the green. Happy ten. There's fifty five, and we're off. Climbing out at fifty nine. Take a look. Trim setting wants to fly where it wants to be. And uh, Pearson traffic, 5 Delta Sierra, taking runway 8 for a uh, high-speed taxi down the runway. So we're coming out, giving it the power, and we're going to have to treat this like a short field. We want to maximize, we want to come out, we want to stay rolling, and then we want to check our instruments and we want to get that nose wheel up and off and there I am I don't have power I don't like the run I'm going to go ahead and I am going to go ahead and abort my takeoff Up and uh, watching that spot now. For a little high, I can bring out a little bit more power. 
gonna drop in some more flaps. Power, pitch for speed, power for descent. Landing's assured. There's the flare, right on the line. Woodland traffic, uh, Skyhawk by Delta Sierra on the 45 uh, for landing south Woodland.
much runway as uh, we can. So we're going to go ahead and get set up here. Those obstacles can be seem pretty uh, intimidating, but remember, uh, you can turn. So after rotation, you climb, uh, do a gentle turn to the right to help clear those obstacles. My liftoff point wants to be that third light. If I'm not at rotation speed by that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, at 71% by that third light, I want to abort my run. Uh, and I'm predicting that I should be hitting that, uh, that, that fourth light. I should be uh, rotated and climbing out. All right, safety briefing. Uh, after rotation, climbing speed, gentle turn to the right to clear the large trees. Uh, and if I have any issues, I'm going to have to uh, land straight ahead uh, until I reach at this point uh, I would need to be at least 700 feet before I can do a turn back. If not, I'm going to be making a turn uh, to the uh, west and landing out in the fields of woodland. All right, here we go. Brakes are held. Gaining full power, release the brakes. Feed off the brakes. Maintain center line control. One, two, 70%. And lift off. And I want to climb out on that best climb. Portland area traffic, uh, Cessna's on the upwind from the south. 